How do you assess the European Union's support to its neighbourhood regarding vaccine delivery and post-COVID recovery measures? Well, as you have seen, this Commission has engaged very early on in the crisis. We have delivered financial support and also uh, tools and equipment to fight the COVID crisis at the very first period of the first wave. In the Western Balkans, we have deployed over 3.3 billion euros. In the East, over a billion euros in financial help uh, to keep the businesses running, to keep the healthcare sector running, to protect the lives of the people, to make the healthcare system uh, more resilient throughout these regions. Also in the South, we have been investing heavily uh, to help them and to keep these countries running. And I think this uh, help was uh, very valuable. And now it is the time to deliver on the vaccines. We have started out with the COVAX initiative, where the European Union is the single biggest donor. So vaccines uh, through there are already uh, arriving in the regions. Um, and quite a number uh, have already arrived. For the Western Balkans, uh, I was very happy to announce that we have been able to put some additional help. Because as you see, the healthcare sector in the Western Balkans is fighting a very difficult uh, crisis uh, and they are lacking vaccines. So the next step is to do the same for the Eastern Balkan countries. And this is why I'm here today in Warsaw to ask for help from the Polish government. Uh, to bring these vaccines very quickly to the Eastern Balkan countries. Thank you. We can move on with our second question. As you know, the College of Europe in Ambrin has been specializing in enlargement related issues since the 90s, as well as on neighborhood studies since 2011. How do you perceive the importance of College of Europe in Antolin and of such studies in the European higher education system? Well, I was just um, having a little conversation with your dean uh, about this. I'm a student coming from Szeged, uh, from south of Hungary. And I do remember when Natolin uh, was created. And I do remember the brand the College of Europe needs uh, for students. Uh, back in the day, in 1992, I was also a student looking for opportunity to learn European studies. So ever since, uh, my life has crossed always with the, with the uh, College of Europe, because then I was working at the Hungarian uh, permanent representation as the senior lawyer, uh, and it was my task to keep uh, the contact with Bruges and represent my country uh, in the Administrative Council. And that, that was when I have seen uh, the whole uh, operation in motion, and that is truly amazing. And ever since I'm, I'm uh, meeting colleagues uh, who have been studying there, and they always represent a higher quality in terms of knowledge. And I'm truly happy that now my life crosses again uh, with Bruges and Napoli, um, and I can be your promoter uh, for, for my mandate, which I'm happy to do. Thank you. Um, at the beginning of the academic year, we had the pleasure of hosting at Natolin with Ms. Vatlana Tikanskaya, who called upon the young generation to be engaged in democratic change in Belarus. How do you assess the situation in Belarus, and can the youth and education really make a difference? Well, Belarus is undergoing difficult times. And we see uh, that freedom and democracy uh, is not getting closer to the country, unfortunately. And I do hope uh, that over time this will change and over time the youth uh, will live the lives like we do. Um, and therefore, if there is a possibility to welcome Belarusian students in Natolin, of course, uh, if I can be of help to realize that, I would be more than happy to contribute to this. Uh, in the long run, I'm quite certain that the uh, Belarusian people will overcome their difficulties, but only they can do that. Thank you very much. Thank you.